Hello and welcome to a new series that I'm doing. This is a Let's Code series uh, focusing on Renpy and the visual novel engine. Uh, before I get into uh, this episode, I just want to give a big shout out and a big thanks to all of my supporters on all platforms. A short caveat before I get started, I'm self-taught with Python and with using uh, the Renpy language and although they are similar, there are some differences between Renpy and Python. With that out of the way, let me explain what I'm going to do today. I had thought to show the basics of adding characters and getting them to speak, however this has been covered extensively by YouTube already. Instead, I thought to focus on more specific use of code, and that's the choice menu, a staple of every visual novel. Choices allow the player to shape the story according to their actions. Choices can be minor or impactful. Each choice has the possibility to split your story into new parts and new directions. Of course, with every divergence, a story becomes much more complicated. This could be interesting for the player, but a headache for the developer to keep track of. So let me show you what I've set up so far. This is just a basic project. The only difference is I've added a script section and in our script file, I've stripped out all of the code that's normally here and just added under the label start a jump to choice menu one. So let's create our choice menu script file. So on scripts, right click, go new file, and we'll call this choices.rpy. Press enter. And you can see that it's created our file. We now want to create the label that this script here is jumping to. You see choice menu one. So let's copy that, paste it in, we do the brackets and the colon, and that sets the label up. Underneath we'll have menu, colon, and then we can have our choices. I'm going to call it option one, option two, and then option three. And to turn these into actual choices, we just add colons to each. And underneath we'll have Eileen say this is option one. This is option two. This is option three. And then under this we'll put return so that it ends the game. Control S to save that. If we launch the project, click start, you can see we've got our three options. If I click option one, Eileen says to us this is option one, and the game ends. Which is great. However, what happens if you want the player, say it's a conversation uh, uh, part, and you want the player to choose more than one option? Well, we need to link back to the menu again. And to do this, we can name our menu. So we're just going to call this choice underscore menu. And under here, we add a jump command to choice underscore menu. Now, when you need to do repetitive actions, you can hold down control and create two cursors and all your actions will be repeated. So jump, choice, menu. Press escape and it'll go back to a single cursor. So let's save that and let's go and have a look and see what that's done. So again, we've got our options. Look option one, this is option one. And we're back to the option menu. Option two and option three and option one, and option two. I think you see what's happening. The game doesn't end. So we need to set some conditions and some variables that allow us to get past this menu option. So let's set some variables up. So under our label, we're gonna set some variables. Now the dollar basically means Python. spell it right. It basically means that. 
rather than do that each time, we can just use dollar. We're going to say 01 equals false. And what that's done is it sets the variable 01 and it's set it to false. And we'll do the same for 02 equals false. And under our menu choice, in fact, I'm going to return this so that we can see it a bit clearer. We'll do the same there. And here we want to add a condition that if 01 is equal to, that's what the two equals means, equal to false, then it will, it will show this choice. And we want to set the variable 01 equals true. This will stop it from continually repeating back to the same option. We'll do the same for option two. Option two is equal to false. Option two is true. And for option three, we'll put in there if O1 is equal to true, then it will show option three. Now something else we need to do is we need to change this jump to a different menu. So we'll change this to jump choice and menu. Here, create a new label, new choice and menu. And we'll just have it end the game. So now if we save that, jump back into the game. Got. So we've got option 1, we've got option 2. We select option 1, we then left with option 2, and option 3 has shown up. If we select option 2, we see that both option 1 and option 2 have disappeared, and we're left with option 3. If we click option 3, it then ends the game. Okay, we can expand this further by adding some additional variables. So let's say we had uh, some menu options that were based on your strength or your agility, something like that. So let's add a couple more in here. So we're going to add strength. We'll set it to zero. And we'll add agility. I'll spell it correctly. So what we need to do is we'll add a quick way to increase these. So box menu attributes um, increase strength. And we need to There we go. Now we want to do this repetitively, so we will jump back to the attributes menu. So that we can increase both, and then we'll have a final option here, continue. And this will jump. Now what we need to do is actually have these taken out and put in another label. Call 
choice menu to This is because these variables will only be active inside that label, which means you can use these again elsewhere. Normally you wouldn't do this for these kind of stats, you would have them in their own initialization block, but for the sake of this demonstration, we're keeping them in that. So this label gets called first, which will give us this screen so we can increase some attributes, and then it will then jump on to choice menu two this will then do this part. So let's just have a quick check of how that's looking. I launched the project. Go to start. See we've got increased strength, increased agility and continue. Now if I do shift O and type in strength you can see ignoring the bit at the top because that was my uh, test earlier. We've got strength equals zero and again if I type in agility that tells us it's zero. So if I then click increase strength, strength plus 10, it takes us back to this menu. I'm just pushing up on the keyboard to go to previous ones. Look at strength, you can see it's now increased by 10. So we know that the command is working. If I click continue, we then get our options. So how can we use these state increases? Well, we've got this part of our choice menu we can also add in here and which is another condition so if O1 is equal to false and strength is equal to 10 in fact let's change that to is greater than equal to 10. We'll then show this option. If we change this and agility, in fact actually let's do it this way, the strength is less than or equal to 9. Let's put some space there. We'll then show this option. Now bearing in mind this third option only trigger if this first option has been called and it's true. So we actually want to give it the option of being both O1 and O2. So to do that we just add or O2 is equal to true. Now if we save this, Control S, go in game, start, we've got strength and agility. I'm not going to increase the strength, we're just going to continue. There we've got option 2 because we had 9 strength or below, we actually had 0. Select option 2 and now we get option 3 and that ends the game. So you can see how you can expand each option with different variables have them jump into either the same menu or a separate label. You can even have under a label have it jump back to the menu before if you wanted. So say you had them jump from option one to here, something played out and it then jumped back to that menu that's something you're able to do. I think that's covered the basics. Uh, I hope you found this uh, helpful and informative. If you'd like to see more of these, uh, let me know in the comments below. If there's anything specific you would like me to cover, I uh, will attempt to do so. With that, take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.